Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me where I will be talking to you and, and sharing my insights about how to build great relationships at work. Thank you very much to Tech Exeter for having me on. I am Juliana Turnbull, and I'm a freelance marketing consultant from Barcelona. So today I'm going to talk to you about and, and share how to build relationships even when working remotely. My full name is Joe Juliana Turnbull, also known as SEO Joe Blogs on Twitter, and I'm a freelance marketing consultant. I've actually been working uh, in remote since 2010. I've worked in uh, London, uh, Sydney, and, and Perth, Australia, and also I'm now in Barcelona. And the organizer Search London, we are an online meetup group where we were face to face and uh, for those in SEO, PPC and social media. And we've actually turned 10 years old earlier this year. I've also been shortlisted for a few awards, which is great in 2021, uh, the Digital Women's Entrepreneur of the Year, Innovator of the Year and Freelancer of the Year. I was also a finalist, um, a global freelancer finalist for 2020. And I'm also the organizer of Turn Digi. It's an online event where we promote entrepreneurs, rising talent, and we have a diverse range of speakers. Our next event actually will be September 16th. And we have people dialing in from all over the world. So if you feel like talking, uh, get in touch with me. We only uh, have speakers that have a case study to share. You do not need to have spoken at many events in the past. Today's talk, I'll be going through a few key areas about relationships, soft skills, assessing them, some practical tips, recognizing when to walk away, away and also some takeaways. I really like this from mindtools.com. A good work relationship requires trust, respect, self-awareness, inclusion, and open communication. And that's really key. And that's what I'll be talking about in uh, the presentation. So why do uh, relationships at work matter? Well, we do spend a third of our time there, despite the fact that uh, we are no longer maybe commuting for all that time every day, we are spending between six and eight hours at work. So if we are feeling that we have a positive relationship with our friends or with our colleagues, with our boss at the office, it helps to boost our morale. We feel good, we, we feel motivated um, and we want to do even better. Now, this is actually great for the company because if you feel valued at your company, you don't want to leave. So there's low churn and actually the staff are more productive. So actually the company can save money by um, not having to recruit as many people and they can actually invest it in their staff. So improve the soft benefits and this will lead to, you know, boosting even more employee morale, which is great to see. Positive relationships, what is this? It's when you're recognized, when you're inspired, when you're motivated, um, when you feel included, when people trust you, you know, your award means something. Negative relationships, uh, I think we've all seen them. It's when you're belittled, there's no recognition at all. You feel like if you leave nothing, um, you know, you're you not gonna be missed. You're not motivated at all. You're excluded from meetings or other chats. And there was a, a hidden agenda as well from some of your colleagues. Uh, Victoria Alcina actually did a great presentation about bullying at work. Unfortunately, this happened to her and she was permanently excluded from SEO meetings, despite being the SEO manager. I worked for um, a 100% remote company. And unfortunately, the, the CEO always had a hidden agenda. Um, my role was changing all the time. I never knew if I was coming or going. And that was the same with many people. Uh, I had to cut that relationship uh, because it was not, uh, it was a very negative one, a very toxic one indeed. So we've just touched upon some relationships. I'm going to go through some soft skills with everyone now. And there will be time after for some uh, some questions and answers. So soft skills, uh, I believe that many people will focus on the hard skills. What have you learned during your last company? And there's less really about these interpersonal or non-cognitive skills. So this is about communication, uh, collaboration, adaptability, even more important in 2020 and 2021, and of course, next year too. Emotional intelligence and active listening. So these are some um, interpersonal skills that I found on LinkedIn. So these are all my own work and I have sources that are in the back of this presentation, which I'll be sharing with everyone. 
So communication is really about also um, confidence and empathy, listening to others, um, adaptability. This also ties in with self-management and self-confidence. And then we also have emotional intelligence. So everything highlighted is what I'm going to be talking about in more detail today. So EQ or EI, this is emotional intelligence. And um, I really liked this study that I saw from the um, career building survey or career builder survey in Canada. And they said that 71% of employers say that they value emotional intelligence over IQ, which is very refreshing uh, because, I mean, I scored uh, quite quite well at school until a certain age and it became very, very difficult. And I know uh, a lot of people are always a bit scared that if they didn't do that great at school, um, will they actually be able to do well at work? And yes, you will be able to. So why did employers say that um, EQ is much better than IQ? Well, they said that employees with high EQ are more likely to stay calm under pressure. Yes, this is very important. We all have a lot of stress in our lives. Um, these employees also are better at handling conflict. They lead by example. So if you have a team full of stress heads, you know, well, maybe the new person that's just joined or some of the juniors will think, well, everyone's a stress head here. I'm not sure if I want to be here and they may fly the nest or they may think that's how we work. But no, people with high EQ also tend to make more thoughtful business decisions. Uh, they can also or tend to be more empathetic with other employees, um, which is all good for the company. These are the elements of EQ, social skills, self-awareness, self-regulation. So when I mentioned before, they're able to conf uh, you know, handle conflict and stress, empathy, motivation. Some people agree that um, emotional intelligence is comprised of five elements and some say it's six. I believe the sixth one is confidence and it's really important because if you're not confident, um, in yourself and, and you don't um, believe in what you're doing, it does really impact your social skills. It does impact some how you come across and impacts as well your self-regulation. So self-awareness, you don't let your emotions control you. So if you score, if you answer yes to this, you have high EQ. Uh, you don't make impulsive decisions. You're you're very motivated. You don't. You can look at the small details. That's fine. But you don't look at the small details so much that you don't see the bigger picture. So you're focusing so much on that Excel formula that you don't realize that if you don't finish it, um, actually, you know, you you basically need a formula at the end where you need a result to then be able to put in the presentation for a pr proposal, for example. So it's really important to be able to see that big picture. Um, empathy as well is a big part of emotional intelligence. You need to be able to listen to everyone. So that's when that active listening comes in. You need to be thinking about others, so less about you. And social skills. You want to be creating a great team. People that are great leaders, they want people to be in their team. You want it to be easy to collaborate with others. So I'll be touching a little bit more about this active listening in the next two slides. Uh, a lot of people don't understand about how it, how you should be a good listener. So really a good listener is someone that, um, I put a link here to Harvard Business Review, but really it's about bouncing ideas off that person. You're building that person up. A, a good listener is it's a two-way collaboration. You're supporting that person. It is not just being quiet nodding and then when they finish giving your opinion no 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 that is not a good listener um i've been a lot more aware of this um especially because i do improv and they always talk to be be active sorry be present and and be active in it think listen to what that person is saying you have to say listen you have to listen and you always say yes and so you build on what that person is talking about 
uh, I didn't realize until I was doing a bit more research around this topic that that was back in 1962, um, Thomas Gordon coined that term active listening. And he said it was a very key um, communication skill. So paying attention to your listener, understanding what they're saying and providing that thoughtful response. So again, not just nodding and then giving your opinion, which I have seen a lot of people do. And perhaps I'm a little bit more sensitive now because of the pandemic. You know, we don't always have loads of time outside of work. You know, you're conscious of, you know, who are who is talking over you, who is not listening to you. Um, and also being in the pandemic, when you are on Zoom, you can see who is being active in that conversation and who is taking a seat back. So do you have great listening skills? Can you accept criticism and responsibility? Can you say no? I think it's really important um, if you can say no without feeling bad. We all have to remember to say no. Um, it's okay to make mistakes, but just don't dwell on them. Um, and it's perfectly acceptable and it's good to share your emotions with others, but you don't want to be complaining all the time. Um, you, If you answer yes to all of these, you do have high EQ. Um, you must never be afraid to make mistakes because only through mistakes do we learn. So now we're going to be talking about the assessment section. So I wanted to address the difference between self-esteem and self-confidence. So self-esteem is the image you have of yourself, um, you know, whether it's positive or negative. And this comes from the, the environment. It can also come from uh, perhaps an incident at work or at, in, at, when you were a child, um, perhaps maybe let's say you did a presentation at work and it didn't go very well. So your confidence was knocked. If it didn't go very well and maybe you did something else that also didn't do as well as you expected, it may just think you may start thinking, oh, I'm not very good at this and I'm rubbish and, you know, I can't believe I thought I could do it. And it starts to affect your self-esteem. So you really need to address why you're feeling uh, not confident because we spend way too much time at work. I mentioned a third of our time and here from, I found this um, uh, from another source about how long we spend at overtime. So accountingage.com, this was back in 2018 though, we spend 188 days of our time, uh, extra time at work, this is overtime. So it's important to address any lack, any reasons for lack of confidence. So these are three areas we're gonna be focusing on here, finding your IQ, talking about the strengths, and also just talking a little bit about the personality too. So find your EQ. So you can do this through um, doing a test. You can also get people feeding back like a 360 review or the ability measures. These are the ability measures here, um, but they are paid for. So in today's, today's uh, report, today's um, presentation, I'll talk about self-report. So you can look at these ones. So mindtools.com, psychology today, mind frameworks, they are also in the back of the presentation. It's important that you know your EQ because then you can build on it. It has a positive correlation with success. It has been found. It has a positive correlation with individuals and also with the team. And this I also want to talk about as well. So this is the personality. So the personality is what type of person are you? Um, and they call it, there's a personality test testing the ocean, which is the openness, the conscientiousness, extroversion, the agreeableness, and the natural reactions. So it's important to be able to test this. So this is different to EQ. Um, so then you can be able to understand other people's behavior. If you can understand other people's behavior, then you can try and understand where they're coming from. And maybe you're a little bit more open to when you're trying to build that relationship with them. Oh, they're acting like this because um, of their personality. You know, maybe, for example, let's look at the extroversion versus introversion. You know, do, do they find it difficult to work and communicate with others? If they're quieter in the room, maybe there's a different angle that you can use to try and um, approach them. Or, um, 
for example, natural reactions, emotional stability or neurotism. So do they react? How do they react to the news? Calmly, negatively? Um, do you or do they, you know, worry of so much about the tiny details or are they quite relaxed? So it's important to be able to see how different people's personality is. Uh, I would recommend if anyone is a CEO in HR or a managing director that they do the um, EQ tests, the emotional intelligence test, and also the big five test. So testing someone's uh, personality. I also would recommend, so these are some tests you can do. These are free. Of course, it is not, um, uh, I wouldn't take it as gospel, but it gives you an idea. I would also recommend people look at Clifton Strengths. Clifton Strengths is about knowing what your natural strengths are. So within the Clifton Strengths program, it's about looking at um, you answer a series of questions and it puts you across four different areas here. So strategic thinking, relationship building, executing and influencing. If people at the company are doing um, answering these and then they find out what their top five strengths are so that's where you score the highest they will then work on these and they become their talents so it's a different model because it shows that you can just or not just it's you don't need to always worry about things that you're not good at you build on these top five strengths and they become your talents so for example if we look at um, relationship building so I did the Clifton Strengths. So I scored um, quite high on um, empathy here, uh, developer as well. So I am more in the relationship building side of things. Um, I'm also in the executing because one of my top five strengths is responsibility. And I also, one of my top five strengths here was maximizer. So also I fit under the influencer. Um, and strategic thinking, that was my top strength, learner. So I really recommend that people take the Clifton Strengths. Um, you go through it and find out what are your top five talents and build on that. And with the EQ, the personality test and Clifton Strengths, if you're doing that within a company, and you're very open and transparent, and you can share some of these, you can know how people are, and you can then adapt your way or be more, I would say, empathetic to how people are. Maybe they don't like to have um, lots of calls. Maybe they prefer email conversations or chats. You know, it's, it's very important to know how your colleagues are and also how you are yourself. And then you can better be in a better position to build those relationships. So I went through the assessment of this and I'm gonna take you through some practical tips, recognizing when to talk away, walk away, walk away, and some takeaways. So um, as I said earlier, a relationship, a good relationship is really about trust, inclusion, open communication. So any relationship takes time. Yeah, any relationship does. So spend some time outside of work you know, you can have WhatsApp chats with a few people. Uh, you can be chatting on maybe a Slack or maybe on Telegram. But communication is key. Talk about some things outside of work, what you've done over the weekend, um, what you're planning to do outside of work. Like if you're doing any, um, maybe you're a karate instructor or uh, maybe you're trying for an Ironman or the half mile Ironman. What I found with all communication, sorry, with all relationships is communication is key. And I believe it's um, it ties very closely with confidence, listening and empathy, because if you can understand how people are and you're listening to people, you are confident in what you are doing. You can help to build these relationships or it can help you to build these relationships with others. So. You know, everyone does suffer from a lack of confidence. I did this survey um, uh, last year. And I did it for men and women. Um, I did also do it for those that don't identify with other with either gender. I didn't get a lot of votes for that yet. But what I found was that both men and women, so this is the men's one here, um, suffer from you know uh, lack of confidence. So the men, forty nine percent, actually said that yes, they do um, doubt themselves. 
um, and it holds them back. Women, 53.5%. Um, for the women, it was actually four in 24 votes and the men was two in 34. And maybe that many men don't doubt themselves, but out of what I have here, there is quite a few that do doubt themselves. And 9% actually doubt themselves more than once a day, whereas with women, it was 6.8%. So some of the practical tips for building your confidence is small steps, assess and practice, and then build it. Small steps, assess, build. That's like a continuous, a continuous circle. I really liked it when people said thank you to me. People are so easy to complain um, and talk about what's wrong rather than say thank you. Do that. Put a nice compliments folder in your inbox. And if anyone says something nice to you, it says appreciate you, put that email there. You can also use that as well for when you want to get a promotion. You can also tell people, oh, this is what I've done. Everyone recognized it. They liked it. They enjoyed it. Um, and show that to your boss. There's um, a group that I'm part of, iRemarkable. So I'm also iRemarkable facilitator. And we have a day called Winning Wednesday. It's when you share what you have done, uh, the things you are proud of. So you can do this with your friends, you can do this with your colleagues, you can do this with uh, maybe your family. Uh, it's great to boost the confidence. And I really like this uh, quote from uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, nobody can fake you feeling fair without your consent. So if someone is making you feel a little bit not that great, uh, no, it's um, you can decide how you feel on that. I have done this a few times. Uh, so if you are not sure like what you are good at, um, you may have done this before as well when you're applying for university or when you're applying for a job, but really just um, write it out what you've done and repeat it. Uh, it is a skill to, to, to improve your confidence, but you I would recommend you do this and it has helped. Uh, I mentioned the Clifton Strengths before. Please do this if you can. It really did help me as well. I'm going to go into this in more detail about getting a mentor. I really recommend it. A mentor is someone that you can work with, uh, work with on your on your strengths and really help you to be the best person that you can be at work. And it also can have a positive impact on your personal life too. So I like this um, quote from Oprah, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. So hope is very important. Uh, I always think it's really, uh, you know, once you've lost the hope, it's, um, it's sometimes a downward spiral. So hope is something that if you have hope, you can see what you can do in the future and it motivates you. I'm part of quite a few different groups. Um, I think it's really important for people to have a support network. So the Women in Tech SEO group, that's how I found about uh, Tech Exeter. Thank you very much, Sarah Marks. Um, I'm part of a few networking groups as well, some virtual events. This is where you can also potentially find some mentors. And actually Women in Tech SEO did have a, um, a mentorship program. I was part of the first one where I was a mentor and a mentee and the second um, cohort group this summer, I was a mentee and that uh, definitely helped me considerably. But whether you have a mentor or a coach, it's really a commitment on both sides. It's not going to solve everything. There is work to be done. So this is what you can do weekly. Three things that you're good at. Uh, maybe one thing that you want to improve on. So I mentioned three things because most of the time people are more, well, they're easy. They're, they find it easy to write things that they're not very good at. But I would actually um, uh, write down three things you're good at, one things that you need to improve on, and share this with your group, with your mentor, or with the group that I mentioned you can be part of. Then build this habit. So create and build these good habits. You know, make sure that you get lots of sleep. Um, and exercise as well, very important for the mind. Um, if you are a freelancer, build your brand, then people can see the strengths of yourself. Um, and you can also be a mentor, even if you need to be, mented, men, be a mentee as well. It helps, it really does help to build your own confidence. Now, listening uh, is really important for you to build up your listening skills. So how can you do this? Well, I would say actually, um, if we're still doing some online um, meetings, time how much you're talking against other people. Yeah, um, 
listen to what's not being said, ask those conversations. And when someone is talking, ask interesting and probing questions. So I mentioned before about a listener is like being a trampoline, sort of bouncing ideas off of uh, that person. You need to boost that person up as well. You, I would not you know, always just give your opinion. If they're asking, well, what do you think? Then yes. But really it's about listening and being present to what's being said. I would like this last one. Does anyone build you up and how do you feel? Remember that and do the same for someone else because that's what great listeners do. There's a real lack of good listeners in the workplace and in the world as well. This also includes this last point. Do you want the meeting to be over? Are you sitting quietly? No, take part in that event. Take part in that call. Take part in that Zoom meeting be there and 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 uh, contribute to that conversation empathy these are some tips that i really think people need to be aware of as well so um you know we mentioned i mentioned before about the listening who are the quietest people in the room uh you know all a lot of conferences are recorded or a lot of sorry calls are recorded and meetings so find out about you, you know, are you listening to others? Who are the quietest people in the room? Ask them. Um, you need to, when you want to work with other people, you need to also understand their goals and objectives. So it's not just pushing out your agenda, um, understand where they're coming from. So speak their language, use their software. If you're using a CRM software, perhaps you might be, they might be using HubSpot. So find out what they're doing, like the sales team. Or if it's a dev team, maybe they're using Jira. So if you want tech things implemented or tech um, fixes, that's so you're working in. So SEO, online marketing, you need to um, speak their language. And just make sure that you have a time to discuss it. Some people don't like doing um, meetings. Um, other people prefer. So find out what works for them. But it's really important that you think about this to try and help and improve your um, empathy. This one is really good. Give feedback and get feedback. So it is extremely important to have these 360 reviews um, and also um, find out what people are talking about or how people think about you. Um, deeper conversation with colleagues. It's more about, um, you know, not just oh, how was your weekend, but, you know, maybe more along the lines of, oh, I heard you were like renovating your house. How is that going? Of, of course, there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of stop start with, obviously the, the pandemic, or um, I hear that you're, you know, you're doing um, distance learning or how's the course going? Do, what do you, what elements do you find uh, the most interesting about your course? So it's really just about uh, getting out of that comfort zone, but you don't need to do it then. You can just plan for that. But with anything, just make sure that, you know, you have those smart goals. You don't have to do everything straight away. Um, you know, you might want to have a goal where you present at a company meeting, or you might want to have a goal where you're presenting with um, the dev team. It's really important that, you know, you, you plan it accordingly to when you feel comfortable, uh, but you may also need to do things that, you know, do get you out of your, your comfort zone. So we've gone through quite a few today. I'm going to talk about winning to walk, recognizing when to walk away. I call this I and you. Instinct, no value, and unbalanced. So when to walk away. You've done as much as you can to try and build this great relationship. And this can also be with when you're trying to pitch for new clients as a freelancer, or if you don't want to work with that client anymore. Never underestimate your instincts because I find this has really worked well for me and for other people that I've spoken with. Um, you know, if something's not right, it doesn't feel right, maybe it's not. Uh, but of course, record what happens, email activity, any other documents, uh, perhaps even get a third party to come in, maybe another colleague, um, so that you're not, um, so that you get an unbiased opinion. 
if this ha keeps happening, review at the end of that week, or maybe if it's less regular at the end of that month. So I and you, no value. Do you feel that you're being valued? No, uh, especially if you're a freelancer, uh, you don't have time for this. You set up your time, you set up to go freelance because you don't, you want to be working with people that, that value you. Um, you know, when was the last time someone said thank you? Are you getting aggressive emails or abusive emails? Um, is someone else passing off the work as yours? Unbalanced. So this is another one that I found also with, if you're working maybe in a marketing agency, maybe there's these urgent emails um, that are always last minute. Oh, can you just do this? Just do this. Now, if you're getting this as well, if you're like freelancer, um, you're chasing emails and then suddenly you're getting these urgent emails. Well, no, um, they're not respecting your time. So it's too unbalanced. You know, you're getting, you're pushing a lot and, and then you're not getting much back. You need a healthy, balanced relationships. So yeah, when you're also working in the same time zone, are you getting these late emails, late urgent emails? If you walked away, who would do the work? Do you feel valued on that? And what about uh, scope creeping? Creeping is are you doing more and more work that's sort of out of scope? So when you have these, it's time to cut the relationship, but just give the notice. You know, you can give fair notice, whatever's in your contract. You can be honest. I'm always honest. Some people decide to hand it off to a client. Oh, it's not me. It's you. Or I've got too much work. Oh, if it's not, if it's a bad relationship, you should say, well, I'm not being valued and I'm going to allocate time to the, my clients that, that do value me. And there's nothing wrong with that. But keep any uh, documents so that show that you have not been valued, that show the abusive or aggressive emails. Uh, unfortunately, I've had this situation happen. It's very sad to see. I was honest about the, the reasons to, to end the relationship. Um, that person understood. So we're just parting, but unfortunately, you know, it come to that because of the um, not, not being valued and no recognition. And, um, you know, basically we don't have time to waste. We cannot be in positions where if we don't have a, despite all the, the work that we've put in about being a good, putting, sorry, building a great relationship, if it's not working, it's not working, you know. I N U instinct, no value and unbalanced. So I put some uh, references to here on the last slide. So some takeaways. Any soft skills that maybe they're lacking or you're lacking, I would recommend doing, you know, a personality test, do an EQ test, get a mentor, set some smart goals and then find out when to walk away and stick to it really. This is a great quote from Eleanor Roosevelt. I mentioned it earlier on, no one can make you feel unfair without your consent. I remember that if I ever feel like I'm not, um, if I'm not being valued at all, or someone's trying to make me feel like, um, you know, make me feel negative about myself. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Promote positive relationships, always give praise where due, build that trust with people, avoid any office politics and put a stop to it if you're in that position to do so um, and resolve any immediate, any uh, negative relationships or interactions immediately so that it can be smoothed over. Sometimes there's miscommunication, that's fine, but you need to be able to handle that and then move on. And I like this one from Mary Lou Retton. Optimism is a happiness magnet. If you stay positive, Good things and good people will be drawn to you. People don't want to be working with negative people. Um, always remember, you know, how you can stay true to yourself. Um, and have your boundaries. If you're feeling that you're not being valued, address them. If they're not resolved, then it might be time to, to walk away. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. These are all the different references and sources that I have. It's very small for you to read here, but in the actual uh, presentation itself, when you have access to the slides, you will be able to um, see them all. And I've put them into different headings of um, how I went through in the slide today. So thank you very much, all of you, for uh, joining today. Uh, I'm SEO Joe Blogs. You can follow me on Twitter there 
um, or on LinkedIn, I'm Jay Turnbull. Uh, thank you. And uh, now open the floor to questions.